And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, You shall not eat any fat of ox or sheep or goat. And the fat of an animal that dies naturally, and the fat of what is torn by wild beasts, may be used in any other way, but you shall by no means eat it. For whoever eats the fat of the animal of which men offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, the person who eats it shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, you shall not eat any blood in any of your dwellings, whether of bird or beast. Whoever eats any blood, that person shall be cut off from his people. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of his peace offering to the Lord shall bring his offering to the Lord from the sacrifice of his peace offering. His own hand shall bring the offering made by fire to the Lord. The fat with the breast he shall bring, that the breast may be waved as a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. Also the right thigh you shall give to the priest as a heave offering from the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron, who offers the blood of the peace offering and the fat, shall have the right thigh for his part. For the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering I have taken from the children of Israel, from the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and I have given them to Aaron the priest, and to his sons, from the children of Israel, by a statute forever. This is the consecrated portion for Aaron and his sons, from the offerings made by fire to the Lord, on the day when Moses presented them to minister to the Lord as priests. The Lord commanded this to be given to them by the children of Israel on the day that he anointed them by a statute forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the consecrations and the sacrifice of the peace offering, which the Lord commanded Moses on Mount Sinai on the day when he commanded the children of Israel to offer their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we've read the conclusion of Leviticus chapter 7, which concludes the presentation of the main offerings to the Lord, the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, and the peace offering. These five offerings, the children of Israel, would utilise in maintaining their relationship with God. Just to recap briefly, the burnt offering was to be completely consumed on the fire, except that the skin of that offering was given to the priest who made the offering. But otherwise, this offering was completely burned up. It is a picture of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, who offered himself completely to the service of God, even to the extent of dying on the cross. Nothing of his earthly life was retained for himself. He was totally given over to God. The grain offering was given as an offering of first fruits, but also as a regular part of the offering to the Lord. But the grain offering was not completely burned, only a portion of it was burned, and only if there was no leaven associated with the grain offering. It was given, ultimately, for the priests who were to eat of the grain offering. This was their daily bread, but the children of Israel brought it as an offering to the Lord. The sin offering and the trespass offering, there was two classes of sin offering for the congregation and for the priests who sinned. The blood of this sin offering was to be brought into the most holy place and presented before the veil. In this case, the fat of the offering was burned on the altar, the blood was poured out at the base of the altar, but the carcass of the offering was burned in a clean place outside the camp. 
But the majority of sin offerings for an individual were brought by that individual. He identified himself with the offering by laying his hands on it. He killed the animal, indicating that he deserved to die, but the animal was there as a substitute for him. The fat was burned on the altar. The blood was sprinkled around the altar, but not taken into the most holy place. And the flesh of that offering was given to the priest. The offerer took nothing home, except that he was forgiven. His guilt was appeased. And the trespass offering, when a person had unwittingly broken one of the rules of the Lord, when they realised it, they could be reconciled with God again. The main form of offering that was offered was the peace offering. This could be given in terms of a thanksgiving offering. It could be given as a vow. You make a promise that if God does something for you, you will do something for him. You will bring an offering to him in acknowledgement of his goodness to you. Or it can simply be a voluntary offering that you that you bring. In this case, we've read that portion of the offering goes to the priest and a portion of the offering is returned to the offerer. And he may eat of that offering that same day and in the case of a voluntary offering may eat of the flesh of that offering the following day. But The rule that is emphasised here is that you may not eat the fat or the blood of any of these animals in any circumstances, even when it's not associated with an offering to the Lord. Now, from a health point of view, this is critical in maintaining the health of the people. So God reserved these portions for himself that the blood should always be poured out and that the fat should always be burned and that a person who consumed the blood or the fat shall be cut off from his people. Now it's not explained to us how they shall be cut off. So it could be that the priests would ostracise such a person as being offensive to God. But the simplest reading is simply that this person will get sick and will die. They will no longer be able to fellowship because there are consequences of keeping the Lord's rules and consequences of breaking them. And a person who made a habit of eating the fat or eating the blood would suffer the consequences of it in their own lives. The Lord would bring those consequences to pass because they have not honoured the Lord in the manner in which they have treated these portions which the Lord has reserved to himself. So whoever eats any blood, that person shall be cut off from his people. For many pagan nations, eating blood is common, and eating the fat is common. And because of that, in modern society, great care is maintained to produce cleanliness in the whole process. But the rule against eating blood, as we've mentioned, goes back to when God first permitted men to eat the flesh of animals. After the flood, as Noah came off the ark, he was instructed that they could eat the flesh, but not the blood of animals. And we can now understand that there is a high risk of disease if you eat blood. Today's reading also emphasised when a person brought a peace offering, the portion that would go to the priest. The breast and the right thigh would go to the priest. He would offer the fat on the altar, he would pour the blood out at the base of the altar and the priest would take the breast and the right thigh along with any grain offering home to be consumed by the priests. This was God's provision for the priests as they served God at his altar. We see in all this a close link between the food that the people ate and their relationship with God in the offerings that they brought to the Lord. And so it is that God is involved in our daily lives and we are to give thanks for him for our daily bread.